from the top of the hour. Um, but thanks for joining us here tonight, you guys. Uh, and there we are, top of the hour. So welcome to the Tuesday night call. I'm Dr. Sean Talbot, Chief Science Officer here at Amare. Uh, we're the mental wellness company. And uh, Michael Quach and I are going to run through um, a little topic tonight and then do some Q&A at the, at the end. But our topic tonight is functional nutrition solutions for stress. Um, and what we're trying to do, you know, especially in the time that we're in right now, is, is, is kind of focus our discussions each uh oh it looks like uh we may have lost dr sean um but uh, you know, tonight the topic is topic is functional nutrition solutions for stress um your hosts tonight are myself and and michael quach who's on our our but you know I never do Michael justice when I say he's on our product education team because that's his maybe his 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 uh, his his the title of what he does. But Michael really is a linchpin between R and D, customer experience, operations, marketing, sales. You know, he's the one who keeps all of those pieces sort of tied together so that our products get out the door. People understand how to use them. People get their questions answered. You know, so. When we when we do these these double teams, I think it's really really beneficial for everybody because I come at these problems with a particular set of solutions that are based on biochemistry. My PhD is in nutritional biochemistry, so a lot of the stuff that I end up talking about are stress hormones and neurotransmitters and inflammatory cytokines and you know all this biochemistry and how that can change how we feel how it can change our mental wellness how those kinds of biochemical changes can change our our, our mood and our focus and our energy levels and our motivation and all that kind of stuff and so we're going to talk tonight about how you can use nutrition how you can use specific nutrients how you can use targeted supplements to address that biochemistry that might be out of whack when you're stressed and how you can get it back into balance so that you feel better. You know, so that's the perspective that I come at it from. But Michael has a different set of training and comes at it from a different background and really brings a different flavor to the whole, to the whole idea of mental wellness. So I'll let him explain a little bit about that. Yeah, thanks, Dr. Sean. And yeah, like Dr. Sean was saying, you know, I come in from the perspective of, of, of a mental health specialist. So what I do is I really look at the human behavior and how people, you know, respond to different things in, in, in the world. And in this uh, our particular case at Amari, we're looking at the nutrients and things that, you know, we consume and how that changes the way people think. Um, so this is just a little bit about, you know, my background and, you know, I, I get the uh, pleasure to, to work with Dr. Sean and, and you know, we, we, we with different perspectives and different uh, sets of eyes, we're able to really uh, tap into what we're doing here from uh, multiple different uh, uh, angles and, you know, that's what makes it exciting for us. Right. And even even when you look out at our at our scientific advisory board, for example, you know, you've got me as a as a nutritional biochemist, you've got Michael as a mental health specialist, specialist, you've got people on our SAB who are uh, clinical psychologists or ethnobotanists or gastroenterologists or neuro neurophysiologists or, or 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 experts in oriental medicine. And, you know, so all of those different perspectives brought to bear on this problem really make for a much better solution. Uh, and you'll see, you'll see how we, how we get through that as we, as we go through here. So throughout this month of April, every Tuesday night and every Thursday night, we've really been trying to bring the conversation around to this idea of stress because it's stress awareness month. And that's really, really important. This is, you know, we're in a, we're always in a stressful time, but we're in a uniquely stressful time right now. Before we sort of went live tonight, I guess we were live, but we weren't recording yet. Um, a few of us were just chit-chatting about how stressed out people are right now because at once or it's going to reopen in stages and all of that creates uncertainty and uncertainty leads to a stress response in humans and we've talked about that 
qu quite quite a bit on on some of our other calls so please do go either to youtube or my blog or amari.com and find those those recordings that we've put up there if you want to dig into some of the some of the other details that we've gone through. But when we say here at Amare that we're the mental wellness company, when we talk about mental wellness, we really talk about it as in, in, in as positive a way as possible. get the most out of their physical performance, they actually concentrate a lot up here on what's going on in the mind. And so, you know, with that as the, as the sort of background, I think that's important to say to people because a lot of times people will hear us say mental wellness and they automatically default to thinking that what Amari is all about is exclusively depression and anxiety. And while that might be a really important piece of the overall mental wellness continuum, it's just one piece. You know, so if you can see where my cursor is right now, this low end of the mental wellness continuum, this is depression and anxiety and fibromyalgia and, and burnout and those sorts of things. The conversation that we're having with somebody down here is how can we get you from a two or a three up to a four or a five. So instead of feeling terrible, how, how can we help you feel normal again? How can we help you feel like your old self? It, most people though are here. They're in this sort of normal zone where they're tired in the day. They might re be restless and tense at night. They might have a little bit of brain fog. They might just feel kind of, kind of blah, kind of old, kind of a little bit run down and think that that is a normal situation. And again, you know, I guess it is, normal in that everybody around you is, is, is feeling very similar because of the chronic stress that we're under. But the conversation we want to have with these people is how can we get you from a five or a six up to a seven or an eight where maybe now you feel as good as you've ever felt in your entire life. And then, and then there are some people who are up here in this optimized zone on this scale of one to 10, they might be a nine and you might look at them and go, oh, they're a nine. They're, they're doing great. They don't, they don't need any improvement in mental wellness, but I think you'd be surprised that those are the people that are looking for these kinds of things on a continual basis. So they can go from a nine to a 9.1 to a 9.2 to a 9.3 and continue getting that mental performance or what we call sometimes mental fitness that they can, they can sort of use in other parts of their life, whether they're an athlete, they're an executive, they're a mom, they're, 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 they're somebody who is doing fine but they want to go to a higher level of performance. And that's why we say to people that wherever you are on this mental wellness continuum, we want you to realize this, how you feel is not just in your head, no matter where you are in that continuum, it's also in your gut, which we call the second brain. And it's also in your heart that we call the third brain. And those two other brains send signals to the brain in your head that determine in large part where are you on this mental wellness continuum, right? So if that were the end of the story, that would be a lovely, nice academic exercise, right? And we could point to all these studies that show what happens in the gut determines what happens in the brain and the signals coming from the heart and all that kind of stuff. It, it I mean, the science is there and we're gonna talk a little, a, a, about a little of it tonight. But the best part about this whole story is that you can do something naturally to improve your mental wellness. We can change the signals that are coming out of your second brain in your gut and going to the first brain in your head to help with mood, to help with resilience, to help with focus. We can change the signals that are coming out of your heart going to your head that can help with, with fatigue and overall mood state and overall physical performance, right? So there's a lot that we can do naturally to modulate this signaling across what we call the gut brain axis and the heart brain axis and in doing so help people feel better. And a lot of that science comes out of what we understand now over the last few years about the microbiome. And this microbiome conversation is becoming a national conversation. Three years ago when we started this company, hardly anybody 
had even heard of the microbiome out in the public. It was something we had been studying in, in, in the scientific community for a number of years, but it had never gotten to a place scientifically where it mattered to the average person that we could actually change the microbiome, this collection of bacteria in your gut to have an effect systemically on your mood, on your physical health, on your overall well-being. We'll talk about a little bit of that kind of stuff tonight. But now, three years after starting this company, when we go out and we say to people, how many people have heard of the microbiome? You know, more than half of the hands in every aspect of human health. And that's important because we've known this for a long time, that the World Health Organization has been calling what we're focusing on here at Amare, mental wellness, has been calling it the health epidemic of the 21st century, whether that's labeled as stress or depression or anxiety or burnout, which burnout was just recently elevated from a from a from a um, from a condition to a full blown syndrome, right? So I guess you know, in my world, that's actually good news because now that that sort of you know disease state has this has this higher profile. But all of those kinds of things fall under the umbrella of of mental wellness, and that's why we decided to focus the entire company on that. And so you know. When we focus it on mental wellness, the next question becomes, how do we most scientifically and, 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 and effectively modulate that mental wellness? That's why we look at the microbiome. So we're not a microbiome company. We're not a gut health company. We're focusing on the gut and the microbiome as a means to an end to improve mental wellness and to improve physical health. And the, the, the reason that we focus there is because the science has so fundamentally changed over the last few years. So much so, um, Michael was nice enough to grab this screenshot of a, j just an example of all the major research universities around the country. And this is just in the United States, I think. Well, there's one Canada, there's one Austria there, there's a the Netherlands. But really, if you look globally, you start to see not just dozens, but hundreds of these microbiome centers that are set up at universities, that are set up at pharmaceutical companies, that are set up at, at complete bio biotech companies that are formed around this idea of if we can harness what's happening in the microbiome, we can have effects throughout the entire rest of the body on what our immune system is doing, on what our stress uh, physiology is doing, on what our inflammatory cascade is doing. So, you know, when I say that the microbiome influences every single aspect of human health, that's not an overstatement, and 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 the and the and the research just just sort of proves that. So you know, without getting into the details too much, because tonight isn't really about gut physiology. We've done other seminars about that. Suffice to say that one of the reasons that we're focusing on the second brain, on the microbiome, on the gut, is because what happens in the gut in terms of neurotransmitters, the, the, the bioactive molecules that determine our mood, most of that happens in the gut. So for example, 90 to 95% of our body's serotonin is made in the gut. Serotonin, many people recognize that word. That's the, that's the neurotransmitter that is, that is most closely aligned with happiness and depression. If your serotonin levels are too low, you're likely to be depressed. If, they're, if, if we can get them higher, you're likely to have a better mood. And we know that most of it is made in the gut. Now, it's, you know, it's not like the serotonin is made in the gut and it leaks out into your bloodstream and then it flows up into your brain and you feel happier. There's a lot of signaling that goes through what we call the axis. That's why a lot of times we talk about the gut brain axis. The axis is the communication network where those signals travel. So that serotonin level being higher in the gut sends a signal through your immune system, through your endocannabinoid system, through your, through your inflammatory cytokines that send another signal into your brain that leads to a better mood. So serotonin can do that. We know that about 70% of our dopamine is made in our gut. That's the neurotransmitter that helps with motivation. We know that most of our GABA, the neurotransmitter that helps us relax when we're tense, is made in our gut. 
We know that norepinephrine that helps us focus is made in the gut. We know the gut also makes not just neurotransmitters, but other signaling molecules like short chain fatty acids and you know, short chain amino acids that have signaling effects in the brain, but also across other parts of the body. So you know, we joke around sometimes that you know, what happens in the gut doesn't stay in the gut, and, but we focus on the gut first so that we can get that balanced. And as a result of that, we can get this rebalancing cascade that goes throughout the entire rest of the body. And so that brings us to the real topic of what we're, what we're focusing on tonight, nutrition, right? So is by what we deliver it to it, by what we deliver to the gut every single day, multiple times per day. You know, people are eating constantly sometimes. And every time you choose a food, you're choosing to improve your gut health and improve the signaling to your brain and through the rest of your body, or you're choosing to throw static into the system, or depending on what you're choosing, you might be choosing to, 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 to damage the whole system. You know, so nutrition is really, you know, I, it, as a nutritionist, I sometimes will say to people, there is hardly a more intimate interaction that we have with the world around us, right? Besides nutrition. Nutrition is not just something that we do to our bodies. It has, it has biochemical effects. It has physiological effects. It has structural effects. What we eat actually becomes who we are. And I mean, that, you know, that might sound like an overstatement coming from a nutritionist, but, it, but nu nutrition can be, um, uh, uh, can be very directly impactful uh, pro or con on so many of the things that we view today as chronic diseases, right? Nutrition that we, you know, we know it's involved in cardiovascular um, um, function. We know that it's involved in, in stress physiology. We know that it's involved obviously in, you know, digestive disturbances, but you know, here's a, here's a cartoon that's showing you all the different pieces that nutrition will really have effects on the body, but these are also mediated by stress. So, you know, why, 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 is, why are nutrition and stress sort of two sides of the, of the continuum here? Poor nutrition is a unique stress on the body. When you get down to the cellular level, the cell doesn't really care. Is that stress coming from your traffic jam or your financial stress? or the stress of the kids scream in the background because they can't figure out the, 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 the online lecture or the stress from uh, polluted air or, or contaminated water or, or sugar or processed food or any of that kind of stuff. Right down at the cellular level, all those stresses are basically the same thing. And so that stress, the more it's chronic, the more it becomes what we call catabolic and it breaks down every single tissue in the body. So that's, that cell will break down faster. And if it's in the bones, that's gonna be bad for your osteoporosis. If it's in your heart or your blood vessel linings, that's gonna be bad for your cardiovascular disease. If it's a neuron, a brain cell, and it's in your, and it's in your brain, it's gonna be bad for your focus and your risk for you know, dementia and things like that, right? So you know, we, can, we can look at it sort of on a macro scale, or we can look at it on, on a very micro scale, but nutrition, good nutrition, can be very much used as a buffer any of those sorts of stressors. But here's the, here's, the, here's the rub. Whenever we're stressed out by any of those things that I talked about, the, uh, very often the last thing we wanna do is, is, is eat the kind of diet that we know we're supposed to eat, right? Everybody on this call right now knows that you're supposed to eat more fruits and vegetables, you're supposed to eat good fiber, you're supposed to eat brightly colored so you get the, get the phytonutrients, you're supposed to eat a rainbow, all the kinds of things we're gonna talk about sort of in detail tonight. You all know those kinds of things. But when we're stressed out, we are not inclined to go fix ourselves a salad or eat some salmon uh, or, or look for a high fiber food. When we're stressed out, we're inclined to stress eat. And we've done, we've done stress eating lectures, but just, just suffice to say, that stress sends signals to your brain that causes you to go out and look for sugar 
and junk food and comfort foods. And that's exactly the kind of food that's going to cause more damage. So, you know, environment for yourself. So there is less opportunity to make the wrong choices, right? There's less opportunity to get, go for the bag of chips. And there's more of an opportunity to, you know, pick up a salad because it's already prepared in the refrigerator. That's going to make us, um, that's going to, that's going to set us up for better success in the state of stress sort of cascading through our entire body. So this is what I was talking about here. Here's an example of oxidative stress. We could also, we could switch this out and put inflammatory stress. We could switch this out and put psychological stress. We could switch this out and put blood sugar stress, which we would call glycation stress. All of that stress is gonna be damaging to all of the tissues down below that. And then below the tissues, the individual cells. And below the individual cells, the individual organelles in the cells. So, you know, it, it, it all cascades up to, if you choose the right dietary pattern, we can, we can alleviate a lot of that stress right at the cellular level. So what does that look like? It really looks like this. This is, this is something that's been around for a long, long time. We, we just for general wellness, we want people to eat a rainbow every day. And sometimes I'll challenge people to do this. There are even apps out there that you can download to your phone that will encourage you to eat something blue and green and yellow and orange and red and even white. You know, a lot of times we'll say to people, you know, avoid white things. You know, we're telling them don't eat white bread, don't eat white rice, don't eat the highly processed carbohydrates. But you know, there's things that would fall in here like mushrooms, one of my absolute favorite foods, cauliflower would follow in, the, in, in there. They're packed with other things that are still phytonutrients. They just don't have that it does not have that rich color. But why do we tell people eat a, eat a rainbow? Because what you'll see here is that the, the, the colors are, are um, the colors are in, 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 in different foods. The reason, let me, let me say it this way. The reason different foods are different colors is indicative of the phytonutrients in the food. So uh, yellow, for example, might indicate lutein, which is a carotenoid. Orange might indicate beta carotene, which is a carotenoid. Um, red might, or, or green might indicate uh, chlorophyll. Um, uh, red might indicate lycopene. Uh, blue and purple might indicate different polyphenols or flavonoids, right? So that's why we tell people to eat a rainbow because what that means is you're getting a rich collection, a wide array of all these different phytonutrients. And the reason that's important is because those phytonutrients will protect us against different kinds of stress. So Polyphenols, for example, in, in blue and purple are very effective against, against oxidative stress. Carotenoids in yellow and orange and red foods are very effective against inflammatory stress. Um, uh, you guys get the idea, right? So the more of those that you can get, the more colors, the more broadly protected you're gonna be against any of those kinds of stress that we encounter. And you'll see why this is important when we get down to the cellular uh, uh, um, discussion a little bit later. So here's some other foods that are both protective against cellular stress, but can also be protective against psychological stress because they can actually boost your mood. Some of these boost your mood because they're high in polyphenols, which in the gut can change what, what's happening with the microbiome. If you change what's happening with the microbiome, you change their metabolism, they maybe start making more of those uh, neurotransmitters like serotonin. are a good example of a food that actually contains melatonin, uh, contains melatonin and serotonin. So you get a relaxation effect and you get a mood boosting effect. And it also has polyphenols. So you're getting an anti-inflammatory effect. So you're reducing that sort of stress. This is one of the reasons that you're going to see these kinds of foods 
um, it, at, at, at a predominant place in what we call later on the mental fitness diet, the, a way of eating where if you can slot more of these foods into your daily daily intake, you're going to naturally feel better. And it's not just because of the fiber or just because of one particular um, phytonutrient. It really is a matrix effect where if you're delivering the right foods directly to the gut, you're going to change the metabolism and the structure of that microbiome. And as a result of that, you're going to have a cascade of signaling, positive signaling going out throughout the, throughout the rest of the body, right? Dark chocolate is something that, that, that everybody wants me to point out. Um, so the, the, the phytonutrients are one piece of it. There are other kinds of nutrients that we can focus on, and we'll get into the food sources of these. Um, probiotics, obviously, we're going to talk about different herbs that we can use as adaptogens, different amino acids that can be used as precursors to make those neurotransmitters. Um, B vitamins that aren't really precursors, but they'll be, B vitamins will be involved in taking those precursor nutrients and going through the metabolic process. They're called cofactors. They're the, they're the nutrients that allow that process to go. So if you're low in the, in the precursor amino acid, you can't make the neurotransmitter. If you're low in the cofactor B vitamins, you can't make the neurotransmitter. So there's all kinds of places where this process could go wrong if you are nutritionally deficient or at least nutritionally non-optimal in any of these kinds of nutrients. So um, there's, 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 there's all kinds of ways that we can naturally improve these pathways. And we've already built virtually all of those into our Amari product line. So there's one level when people come into a seminar like this where they want to know all the details. Why did you use this uh, amount of amino acid? Why did you, um, you know, uh, why did you decide to not give me GABA, but instead we're having your body make more GABA? Why did you use this particular amino acid profile versus that one? Why did you use that phytonutrient versus that? One? A lot of people love that kind of kind of nitty gritty and that's why we have these calls so we can get into that there's the other side of it though where people just want to know that somebody has thought it through and then built it into a product line where you can go okay that fundamentals that's where the probiotics are that's where the prebiotic fibers are that's that's why i'm going to choose that product right because as the mental wellness company there's a level of we want the products just to work automatically for somebody just to plug them into their life and then they feel better, right? That's where the proof in the pudding comes for a lot of people. So we've got 22 products across our product line. I just want to use our flagship product here, Fundamentals, to illustrate this point that if we address the signaling across this gut-brain axis, we can improve how people feel. But that same principle, modulating the gut-brain axis to improve how people feel, applies across the entire product line. Each of these products works somewhat differently from the next product, but they all go to the same place, which is they improve some aspect of your mental wellness. Sometimes that's gonna be stress is improved. Sometimes it's your mood is gonna be improved. Sometimes it's your motivation is gonna be improved. Sometimes it's your mental focus, et cetera, et cetera. These are all different ways that we can help move you up that mental wellness continuum that we talked about before. So just to give you a perspective, because I, you know, I, see, I see on the, on the participants list here that there's a lot of new people on the call, which is, which is, which is terrific. So this might be the first time that you're hearing, you know, how Amari does what it does. And one of the ways that we do this is with our fundamentals pack. This is a pack of products that includes three products. One that works in the gut called Mentabiotics, one that works in the brain called Mentafocus, and one that works in the axis in between called Mentasync. So each of those three products individually will help you feel better because of what they're doing. But we put them together in a, in a coordinated pack so that when we launched this in 2018, we legitimately were saying, this is the world's first coordinated gut brain axis system. It, it had never existed before. Part of, part of the reason it had never existed before is the science had never gotten us to a point where it was even possible. So you know, we were very early to this game. And when we launched this in 2018, we won the Nutra Award, which is 
given to the single example of a product across the entire natural products industry that represents the best new finished product. So we were we were we were very gratified and humbled to 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 win this to win this award, but we're even even more gratified to see how it's helping so many people in so many different ways because we were able to look at the science and pull out of that science the exact nutrients that were that were that were most clinically substantiated for the kinds of benefits that we wanted to deliver. So here's an example of that. In our mentabiotics product, we use three different strains of probiotic bacteria. One that has been shown in human trials to reduce stress, one that enhances calmness, and one that improves mood. So we put all three of these together in a really unique cocktail so that people who use it feel holistically better. They feel better in a very comprehensive way because we're able to positively modulate all these different aspects of their, of their mood, of their, across that mental wellness continuum. So you could think about this. If you felt better in terms of your stress being lower, that's different than, than you being calmer. And that's different than you having an overall better mood. We can measure them separately in our clinical trials, but we want to give you all of these so you feel holistically better. So your, your overall well-being improves. And we can do that with that targeted delivery of those of those specialized probiotic strains we can also do it in a little bit different way by giving specific prebiotic fibers again clinically validated prebiotic fibers like this one by muno this one sun fiber those have been used in trials because they they feed the good bacteria that make the kinds of bioactive signaling molecules that help us feel better. So there's one level of giving them, like we do with probiotics, there's another level of feeding them or nourishing them or fueling them so that they can do their metabolism at a much more optimal level. That's what we're doing with these, with these prebiotics. And the benefit that you see here is more akin to what you might call resilience, you know, or ability to kind of, you know, show up in a, in a, in a, in a better way in a, in a stressful environment. And there's all kinds of studies that, that, that demonstrate that sort of a benefit. Phytonutrients are a huge part of what we're, what, what, what we're doing and really what we're pioneering here at Amari. You know, there's lots of companies that are selling probiotics and there's the bacteria. There's lots of companies that are now starting to sell these prebiotic fibers to feed the bacteria, right? So that's good. We're doing it in a very unique way that nobody else is doing, but nobody is doing this, which, which is something that we call phytobiotics, this idea of using really targeted plant extracts to modulate what's happening, not just in the gut, but really across the entire gut brain axis. So some of these phytonutrients will work in the gut. Some of them will work in the brain. Some of them will work in your axis, right? Balancing either inflammation or, you know, immune system function or antioxidant uh, balance or something like that. Those are all factors that are related ultimately to how we feel related ultimately to our overall mental wellness. And if we can really target that in a natural way and look at it really from, from what I refer to as a systems approach, right? That it, this is not just a gut problem. This is not just a brain problem. It really is a coordinated gut brain axis systemic problem. If we can rebalance that entire system, what we can actually get for people is what I refer to as this rebalancing of their internal pharmacy. So remember what I said just a few minutes ago at the very beginning, your gut is making most of your neurotransmitters. And so if we can get your gut into its most optimized structure and most optimized function, we can actually get it to make those bioactive compounds on demand. So for example, this is an example, which I won't go into the details of, of, of one of our clinical trials, just to, just to give you a very, very high level overview. When people supplement with that fundamentals pack for 30 days, they just take it for a month as directed. This is what we see in their microbiome we see a very substantial changes in their good bacteria and their bad bacteria in their overall balance between different ratios of, 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 of different metabolic bacteria and ones that are associated with your gut lining and et cetera, et cetera. So your microbiome looks a lot better, but as a result of that, we see these profound psychological changes. People feel comprehensively 
holistically better. Their tension is lower, their depression is lower, anger, fatigue, confusion, all the negative mood states are down and a positive mood state like vigor is up. And the reason that that happens, that these people feel so much better is that their microbiome is able to make more serotonin so their mood is better. It's able to make more dopamine so their motivation is better. It's able to make more GABA so their tension is better, et cetera, et cetera. That's the idea of this internal pharmacy is able to make what you need when you need it at the right levels. And that's, that's why, like I said a few minutes ago, so many people are feeling so much better in so many different ways. It's something that we actually weren't able to do as little as three years ago, you know? So we're, you know, even still three years down the line, we're still very much at the cutting edge of how this whole thing works. So that's a quick overview of kind of the, 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 the dynamic of, all these sources of stress in our life and how nutrition can very much be a very direct buffering ability against that stress. You know, uh, I've said this on other calls and I'll just say it now before we move into the, into the questions part of our, of, our, um, of our class tonight. But, you know, people a lot of times, because I've studied stress physiology for so many years, I think they're expecting me when I talk about all the sources of stress isn't going away anytime soon. And so if your stress input is always going to be on the higher side, or at least the moderately high side, you need to darn well better make sure that your buffering capacity is able to match that so that you're able to continue to thrive, right? So that you don't break, so you don't become catabolic and get all that cellular damage that'll eventually lead to a real problem. So, you know, that's, that's why I really like to talk more about stress resilience and how, how we use nutrition, how we use lifestyle to really buffer those sources of stress so that people can take that stress and you know, bring it to another level in terms of their overall mental and physical performance. So what we're gonna do now is, is step into this, this, um, this sort of second half, I guess, of the, of the seminar tonight, where what Michael and I are gonna do is ask each other a few questions. So Michael's gonna ask me a question, I'm gonna give an answer. And the reason that we do this is that we get tons of questions into our product experience team, right? So you can send a question right now if you want to. Product questions at amare.com. And they are beautiful about answering these questions, right? The whole team will answer questions. Michael will guide a lot of, you know, wh where these FAQs live and stuff like that. But what we wanted to do now is answer them in video format. And what we'll eventually do is chop these up so that instead of being a one hour lecture where you have to sort of page through and figure out where that question was, there'll be a question that's just a couple of minutes long on that topic, on that topic, on that topic. And we'll eventually have a whole library of these that people can just share and, and, and make use of however they want to. Uh, do you want to add anything in, in, into that, Michael, before we, before we go? You're in the weeds of this every single day. Yeah, no, I think that's perfectly said, and that's exactly what we're doing. So, you know, we're, we're excited to be able to go over these questions with you guys, because if, 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 you know, we've received this question before, you guys have probably thought it or had somebody ask you. So what do you say, Sean? We get into it? Let's roll. All right. So a, a good question that we always get, and Sean touched on this in the last uh, couple minutes here, I don't like eating vegetables or, or colors of the rainbow. What is the best recommendation for you know, nutrition and, and kind of stress control? Yeah, th this is a very common kind of question. You know, we tell people eat more fruits and vegetables, and they don't, right? You know, if we look at national statistics, um, people are, 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 are just not eating very many fruits and vegetables. It's, you know, it's, it's around one, two servings of fruits and vegetables every day. The number one fruit is, is, uh, is either bananas or apples. The number one vegetable is, is, is actually potatoes as French fries, right? So it's a, it's a pretty dismal baseline that we're looking at. And so we tell people what you wanna shoot for is five to 10 servings 
of that rainbow of those brightly colored fruits and vegetables. And, you know, we're a long way off from that. And so what we try to do for people is still say that we still want you to go get that five to 10 servings of fruits and vegetables, but maybe we can help you close that gap a little bit by giving you those phytonutrients in a supplement form. So in this superfood product that we formulated about a year ago, what we've got here is, is, a really high concentration of the most important phytonutrients that are going to give you the equivalence of about three servings of fruits and vegetables. So this is a way that isn't going to completely make up for, for, your, for your fruit and vegetable gap, but it is a place where we, can, where we can start to close that gap. And so if you look at the main benefits here, you know, it's, it's three servings of fruits and vegetables per serving of, which is, which is two scoops that you just mix up into water. It actually tastes very, very good. One of the reasons that people will say that they don't like the taste of fruits and vegetables is because a lot of them are bitter, especially the brightly colored ones. That bitterness is actually indicative of that high content of phytonutrients. So we take these bitter phytonutrients and we blend them in with fiber, with, with natural flavors, with natural sweeteners so that you can get something that is actually very, very palatable. It tastes, it, it tastes like juice. Um, so you get, the, you get the servings of fruits and vegetables, you're able to protect your cells, but you're also able to get an anti-stress benefit. And that might be the reason that people continue taking it. You'll start taking it to get your fruit and vegetable servings, but you'll continue taking it because you'll actually feel an anti-stress response. And I'll talk about that in just a second. So here are some of the fruits and vegetable extracts that we have in here. And what you'll notice is that it's a wide variety of that rainbow. We've got greens, we've got reds, we've got We've got um, uh, oranges, we've got, you know, we've got a whole, you know, diversity of those different phytonutrients because different phytonutrients are going to protect you against different kinds of stress and they actually do so in different parts of the cell. So some of these are going to work at the cell membrane, some of them are going to work at the mitochondria, some of them are going to work in the cytoplasm and you need to have stress protection at all parts of that cellular mechanism. But the one piece that I think is really, really unique here is that one of these phytonutrients is called ETAS. It's an enzyme treated Japanese asparagus extract. This will do two things. It will shield your body from that stress so you have less damage in the first place, but it will also induce this process called autophagy. Autophagy is sort of like a cellular cleanup process that will go around and clean up some of the residual stress damage that has slipped through. So you get a one-two effect here where you're not just getting your fruit and vegetable servings, but you're getting a stress protection effect from these heat shock proteins, and you're getting a cleanup effect from this stimulation of autophagy. The overall benefit of that is that people take the product and they will go, I actually feel less stressed out. And that's a really, really good effect to have, especially when you're getting it from a company that is the mental wellness company. Thank you, Dr. Sean. And you know, the, the, this next question is, is something that you know, we, we touched on really early on about um, you know, the microbiome and kind of that ecosystem of bacteria that, that exists in, in our, our, our gastrointestinal system. But we get the question all the time, you know, does the microbiome actually influence, you know, your physical body and, and your brain as well? Is, is it stress related or nutritionally related? It's related to both. It's related to stress and it's related to nutrition. So when we talk about this gut brain axis, we often talk about it as if it's the signals going exclusively from the gut to the brain. But what we realize is that this is a bi-directional communication. We have signals going both ways. We have signals going from the gut up to the brain, and we have signals going from the brain down to the gut. And so we realized a long time the 
this, this program called Project B3, where we're focusing on the biome so that we get a benefit in the brain. And if we get a benefit in the brain, we're more likely to have a benefit in the body. And so the body benefits are end up being cardiovascular benefits. They end up being blood sugar control benefits. They end up being muscle mass and body fat benefits. So, you know, instead of directly targeting the body, we look further and seeing what drives those body changes, your appetite, your cravings, your stress eating, those sorts of things. Those are coming from the brain. Let's affect that. But what affects the brain, especially the stress response in the brain, that's what's happening in the biome. And so when we do this with this, with this combination of products, it's called Project B3. It includes the fundamentals, the gut-brain axis system. It includes our Vita GBX, which is a which is a a broadly functional multivitamin that nourishes the body and the brain. But it also includes a whole array of functional foods, proteins, superfood phytonutrients, and targeted prebiotic fibers in a product that we call seed fiber. All of that together starts in the biome, delivers a benefit for the brain, that delivers a benefit for the body. And how, how do I know that? Because we did a clinical trial on it. And I'm actually going to be presenting the results of this clinical trial tomorrow afternoon sometime. I'll do it on Zoom and I'll do it on Facebook Live. I'll post it up a couple hours before I, uh, before I do it so people can join in. But you can see here the title of that scientific publication is Modulation of Gut-Brain Axis Improves Microbiome, Metabolism, and mood. And so that's directly aligned with what we say about Project B3. It improves the biome, it improves. Foods Conference in San Diego in, in, uh, in August this year. Uh, here you can see some, some of the results. I'm not going to go through all of these because what we found was, was very broadly that if we can improve your microbiome, your overall metabolism changes, your ability to, to modulate lipids like cholesterol and triglycerides is better, your ability to modulate blood sugar is better, your ability to modulate body fat is better, and the reason for all of that is because you have a better mood, or at least they're feeding off of each other. So people felt better psychologically, they performed better physiologically, and it all started because of what we were doing in the gut with balancing the microbiome. So absolutely, it's all linked together. It's related to nutrition. It's related to stress. It's related to metabolism. And if you can take this, the systems approach and modulate it all simultaneously, you can really get benefits that for a lot of people are very elusive for them. You know, think, think of how many people have tried to re reduce their stress or tried to lose weight or tried to get a handle on some of the things we're talking about and have a hard time doing it because they have never had a chance to do it in a comprehensive fashion. And that's what we do with that Project B3. So this is a question that I wanna to ask to you, Michael, uh, because you were so instrumental in putting together this new formulation of our Omega product. So I know that Omega-3s are good for your heart and your joints and for almost everything in your entire body, but how do Omega-3s help with stress and mental wellness? Yeah, so, so th that's a great question. And, you know, uh, to, to start the answer, I mean, there's pretty much two groups of uh, fats that our bodies don't really, you know, make. And, and that's the omega-3s and the, pretty much the omega-6s. Um, but, but they both have different properties. And, and omega-3s, which, which many of you guys know as, you know, what is in our fish or, or our fish oil is responsible for, for a lot of inflammatory functions in our body. Um, so what this, what this, how, how this nutrient actually makes a difference is that, you know, when we're able to control some of that uh, inflammatory cascade in our body through the consumption of, you know, omega-3 fatty acids, we're, we're able to see less inflammation in different areas of our body, like our brain, our tissues, you know, our cardiovascular tissue, and, you know, our joints. And that's really important because when we see that there's a high level of inflammation, we see that there's, you know, cellular stress in that area. 
And if cells are stressed out, then you know, the cells are gonna communicate less efficiently. So, so what does that mean? That translates into systemic kind of inefficiency. And, and that's what will ultimately kind of send you down this lane of feeling not so good or, or having you know, poor mental wellness. And, and when you look at infl inflammation and you look at you know, mental uh, wellness type issues, one of the primary pieces like in depression, for example, that you'll see in brain tissue is inflammation. In almost every case that you see of depression, there's inflammation in the brain to some degree. So, you know, that, that also kind of follows suit with uh, many of the, the issues that you see, you know, in different areas of your body, like, you know, arthritis and, and all that stuff. So with, with, with that being said, you know, I, I want to show you guys what the product actually, you know, what, what, what one of the solutions that we have here at Amari to, to help with that is. You know, we've got a, an omega-3 product that is, is incredible, and we haven't seen anything like that today. Um, if you look on the far left, you know, it's, it's got, that's, that's our product there, and it's actually so pure that it's clear. Um, but it's got a five to one ratio of EPA to DHA, EPA and DHA both being omega-3 uh, uh, fatty acids that we were just talking about but primarily a five to one degree of EPA. And EPA is responsible for something, you know, re really neat that, uh, you know, is, is instrumental to how our bodies deal with inflammation in, in tissue. Um, so when we're able to get this nutrient into our body at this high ratio, and, and mind you, not all fish oils give you this ratio of, of EPA to DHA. This is a specific ratio that is geared towards that inflammatory response in our body. Um, you know, and, and that's why it's so important to us because being the mental wellness company, you know, it would make zero sense for us to say, hey guys, we've got a, uh, a, a standard fish oil that you know, will help you with your cardiovascular you know, health and help you with you know, your traditional brain health. You know, we're a lot more specific than that. And, and that's why we decided to use this specific five to one ratio because it's geared for what we are doing here at, you know, uh, uh, Amari Global here. So this is what the product looks like. You know, if you haven't seen, you know, the, the, the Omega product before, check out our, 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 our product info page that shows us, you know, what, what this looks like. Um, you know, and it's a great, you know, piece that helps not only with, with mental wellness, but it also comes with the traditional benefits of the omega-3, you know, uh, uh, nutrients that you would typically consume. You'll still get all the benefits with, you know, your cardiovascular system, you know, your joints and all that great stuff. But again, you know, we're targeted here. We, we, we've done our research to, to help understand all the nutrients that help with mental wellness. And we've used those at our advantage to, to make sure that we're able to, to get the most benefit from them. Right. That, that was a great overview, Michael. So it's, it, it's got all the benefits of a traditional fish oil in terms of inflammation and heart health and brain health and all that kind of stuff. It's got the, it's got the specific ratio of omega-3s so that we have that mental wellness benefit. Um, it's so pure that you can actually see the difference, right? You can compare our clear fish oil to some of these yellow and orange ones that are out there. But don't forget to tell them about the lavender piece of it. That really sets it apart, I think. Why did you decide to put the lavender in there? Yeah, you know, so the lavender piece is really neat. And, and you know, when, when we look at kind of, you know, the market in terms of fish oil, fish oil generally has kind of a, you know, pungent or after smell or the fishy burp kind of feel, which is why a lot of companies go, hey, you know, I'm going to put a little bit of clove in there, or I'm going to put a little bit of, you know, uh, lemon or orange in it, just to kind of help with that, uh, you know, flavor profile. But we decided on lavender because not only is it, you know, one of our Amari colors, but lavender is historically known to have, you know, calming properties with it. And it's, it's naturally derived and it smells pleasant. So, you know, the next time, you know, you, you take your fish oil, you don't have to worry about burping, you know, an anchovy. You know, now, you know, it's, it, it's, it's a lot better and, you know, it's, it's a lot better on the palate. And I think that, you know, how it's delivered and how it's consumed and that sensory 
kind of uh, experience when you take it, I think it kind of sets another sliver of, you know, taking a fish oil. And it's, it's a pretty neat piece. So if you haven't had it before, you've, you've got to check it out. You've got to try it. I, lo I love this product. All right. Awesome. Yeah. So the, our next question is, what do you, Sean, recommend that has the highest level of amino acids? Right. So remember, amino acids, it, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me start off with this. When people think about amino acids, they're thinking about them as a precursor for protein metabolism, right? And, that, and that's certainly a, a big factor for what they're used for. So people are thinking about amino acids in protein products and using the protein products for weight loss or for muscle building or something like that. So we have a protein product that we've formulated that's, that's that's in our GBX functional foods line. It's part of our project B3. But remember, amino acids are also the building blocks for the neurotransmitters that we need to make to help us feel better. They're the, they're the precursors for serotonin and for dopamine and et cetera, et cetera. So we want to have a good source of bioavailable amino acids, meaning we can, we can digest them, we can absorb them, we can transport them to the target tissues where they're actually going to be used for these metabolic effects. So it's not just getting a total amount of protein or an amount of amino acids acids, it's getting the right amount in the right bioavailable forms, this matrix effect. So what you'll see in our protein product, GBX protein, we deliver 17 grams of plant protein, but the plant protein is primarily coming from a chickpea source. We use a little bit of brown rice and a little bit of pea protein to round out that amino acid profile, but we use a chickpea source because that chickpea source gives us not just the amino acids to serve as the building blocks for your, for your muscle building and for your neurotransmitter uh, synthesis, but also that chickpea protein comes with these prebiotic fibers that can help to nourish good bacteria and support microbiome balance. So that's going to be good for all of the things that we talk about here at Amari. It's going to be good for signaling across your gut-brain axis. It's going to be good for your stress resilience. It's going to be good for your overall mood. It's going to be good for your motivation. It's also going to be good for your overall appetite control. It's going to help with blood sugar fluctuations. It's going to help with feelings of fullness, what we would call satiety. And these are all very, very pure plant proteins. The problem though with most plant proteins, and there's no shortage of choices that we can have right now as product formulas, uh, product formulators. We can use soy, we can use whey, we can use all kinds of different pea proteins. There's rice, there's pumpkin, there's hemp. There's, there's, there's just no shortage of all these plants that you can extract proteins out of. Unfortunately, most of them taste terrible. They taste gritty. They have these organic off notes. And a lot of people will go buy a plant protein and they'll use it exactly once and it will sit in their cupboard for the whole rest of their life because they don't ever want to go back to it because it's not a very good experience. We decided to choose this chickpea protein called Artessa because it has a really good mouthfeel, what, what, what we would call organoleptic profile. It tastes very, very creamy in the mouth, almost like a milky dairy kind of a protein, like a whey, but it has a really, really high protein digestibility amino acid score. So this is one of the ways that we measure overall protein quality. Most plant proteins don't score very well on either the taste measurements or the digestibility measurements. So this is one of the reasons that you don't get a good experience here in the mouth and you also don't get a very good experience here in the gut. It doesn't taste good and it causes GI distress. Chickpea protein doesn't do that. It tastes good here in the mouth and it's really soothing and really nourishing to the gut and the microbiome. So you get a very, very nice overall benefit where you're getting something that tastes good, which is the first hurdle. You're getting something that improves metabolism that people can actually see, which is the next hurdle. And then we've actually been able to measure that we see these microbiome changes, which result in mood state changes, which is that last piece of the puzzle. If people feel good, they're going to continue doing that thing. And we can get that by delivering the right proteins and the right amino acids in the right matrix. 
Awesome. And and this this next question, I know we kind of covered a little bit about fibers in that you know product pack called the fundamentals. Um, but I wanted to, we wanted to know, you know, how is fiber related to stress? And do you have a recommendation with, for something with fiber in it? The issue right now, um, I lost you right at the very beginning of that question. Okay, so no problem. Maybe, so, maybe, just, maybe just go back and say it again so we get it on the, rec on the recording. Sure. Um, so I know we talked about, uh, you know, fibers lightly on our uh, fundamentals pack and our mental biotics specifically. But the, the question that we get a lot is, how is fiber related to stress? And do we have anything with fiber in it? Yeah, you wouldn't think that fiber is related to stress, right? Fiber is traditionally thought of as this as this gut thing. And how does that have to do with, with anything that's going on in, in, in my stressful world and my stress response? But what we realize now is, so first of all, fiber is probably the nutrients where there is the biggest gap in the American diet right now, right? We know what the fiber recommendation should be, somewhere around 25 to 30 grams, depending on you know, how old you are, if you're male or female, how, how, you know, how big you are, that kind of stuff. Um, and, and, and what people actually get in their diets. You know, so most Americans are, are, are lucky if you get 10 grams of fiber every day. So a big, big nutrient gap. So we know that people need to fill that gap. One way that you can do that is with a very targeted fiber product, right? So what we decided to do here when we put together seed fiber is not just try to go for a fiber bomb. We didn't want to give people a big dose of fiber in terms of overall grams of fiber. We wanted to make sure that that amount of fiber we were giving was manageable in terms of your digestive performance, but we wanted to make sure that it was targeted specifically to two things, microbiome balance and gut integrity. So if we could deliver prebiotic fibers that did specifically those two things, we would be on to something. And so that's exactly what we did. The base of this product are, are, are very pure seed hull extracts. So when you cold press a seed and you remove the oil from it to use for anti-inflammatory effects or immune system modulating effects or something like that, what's left over is this really rich source of fiber, specifically prebiotic fiber, and phytonutrients. And so we're able to use that as the base to deliver a really, really nice targeting of the, of the prebiotic, uh, prebiotic part of overall fiber. So, you know, all, all prebiotics are fibers, but not all fibers are prebiotics. And remember the prebiotic designation means that it's nourishing the microbiome and having an effect on your gut integrity. The result of that is not just a gut benefit. It's an overall systemic benefit where stress resilience goes up, mood goes up, stress levels go down, and we get that from the fiber. But we also amplify that effect in this product by using a mushroom extract, specifically a mycelium extract that comes from the shiitake mushroom. This is rich in these compounds called alpha-glucans, which can help your microbiome now that we've given the fiber to give a good gut environment and a good microbiome structure. Now we can give them a molecule that they can use to signal the anxiety centers of the brain so that now you've got a fiber product that also takes the edge off your anxiety. So this is a very multi- benefits. Our last question here is, you know, what functional ingredients or what functional nutrients do you recommend for cellular stress and gut health? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. And so people are, I, I think, are getting the idea that we, one of the things that we focus on here at Amare is that we can look at the gut, we can look at the microbiome. We can look at the individual cells throughout the whole body. And really what we're trying to do across all of that entire system 
is improve stress resilience. You know, so one of the ways that we can do that is by focusing just on the gut lining. We can make sure that we don't have leaky gut. We can make sure that we have good gut integrity or that we don't have gut permeability. These are different ways of describing leaky gut versus a good healthy gut. If we can make sure that we start there and make sure that your gut is healthy, that's gonna, that's gonna alleviate a lot of the cascading problems that we could get into if we didn't have a good gut integrity, such as more inflammation, such as immune system overreaction, such as systemic stress and signals sent through the entire body. So that's one of the reasons that we have products that focus on gut lining, microbiome balance, and also, and, and, and also cellular, cellular um, uh, 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 stress resilience at the same time. They're all linked to each other. Um, but I, you know, before I talk about the specific supplements, I want to I want to say this: there's lots of foods that we can recommend. This is a this is a, a sort of a, a, a little graphic that's going to be in 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 my next upcoming book um, called the Mental Fitness Diet. This is the Mental Wellness Food Pyramid, and what you see here is that the kinds of foods that we're having at the base of the pyramid fresh fruits and vegetables, brightly colored, high fiber, high phytonutrient fruits and vegetables, herbs and spices, these are all high in those kinds of phytonutrients that we always talk about. So I would love for people to get them from their baseline diet, but if you can't all the time, that's when the supplements come in and we can actually give you those phytonutrients to close that gap. And one of the great places to do that is with our Vita GBX product. So a lot of people would look at this and go, oh, that's Amari's multivitamin. And it is, but it's a multivitamin that's been designed specifically to nourish not just the body, but also the mind. And in doing that, we're getting new we're getting nutrition across the entire gut brain axis. So this is something that with most multivitamins, you kind of have to cross your fingers and hope it's doing something for you that's healthy. With this one, you can actually feel a lot of those mental wellness benefits in terms of these nutrients helping to support concentration, attention, alertness, resilience, focus, all those things that we would have under that umbrella of mental wellness. So th those are the kinds of phytonutrients that are in a blend that we call the bright mind proprietary blend. That's just part of the overall 50 plus vitamins, minerals, phytonutrients, amino acids that are in there all in natural forms that can really give you that signaling across the entire gut brain axis. Um, one of the very unique aspects of how Vita GBX works is not just by giving you the nutrients that you need to bring you up to those optimal nutrient intake levels, but to really modulate and activate these things that we call CDRs, cellular defense responses. A couple of years ago, I wrote an entire book about this concept that if we can activate these pathways, that are inside of every single cell in the body, we can activate a pathway called NERF2 where, that, that will stimulate our body to make its own antioxidant enzymes. We can, we can work on NF-kappa B to control inflammation. We can work on the CERT pathway to control aging. We can work on mTOR to, to enhance metabolism. We can work on heat shock proteins to, to help with cellular cleanup and sort of housekeeping enzymes. We can activate all of those, modulate all of those pathways naturally if we give the right phytonutrients. Some of these are, 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 are flavonoids, some of these are carotenoids, some of these are amino acids, some of these are tocotrienols. There's a variety of these different nutrients that are all built into Vita GBX. So we can give the cellular machinery exactly what it needs to function at its most optimal natural levels to, to protect itself, which is the protect yourself piece is, is probably a million, no exaggeration, a million times more effective than any dietary antioxidant that we could give. So the phytonutrients are really, really important. We can get a certain amount of those in Vita GBX. We can get the rest of them in superfoods. So superfoods, one of my favorite products because it gives you a very, very wide array of all of these different phytonutrients from the fruits and vegetables that we don't eat very much of at all. And so it's those phytonutrients that are having those cellular protective effects 
in different parts of the cell against different kinds of cellular stressors. You know, so inflammatory stress is different than oxidative stress, which is different than glycation stress. Wouldn't you want to protect yourself from all those different kinds of stress? Of course you would. That means that you're, that you're giving your body the best chance at optimal health and well-being if you're able to protect itself in all of those different ways. Um, you know, and, 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 and this one I have to say a quick word about. I know we've talked about it before, but ETAS is something that not only protects you at the cellular level, but you can actually feel that. You feel that anti-stress response where if you're stressed, you'll feel an edge coming off your overall stress. You'll feel calmer in the face of that stress. And that's coming because this ETAS, this asparagus extract, is helping your body make more of those protective heat shock proteins. So there's a lot going on with our Amari products, but one of the things that I love about it is that Obviously, you and I, Michael, get excited about the science, right? We get excited about people knowing how cool these products are and why this ingredient, why that ingredient, why the combination, and, and that's awesome. But what I truly love about the products is that someone who doesn't necessarily care about the science can just go, okay, I'm going to try it, and they plug it into their life, and they feel the benefit of it. That's where, that's where the proof really comes in, that that science is now making a meaningful impact in somebody's day-to-day -day life. And that's and that's that's where it really matters in a you know in a lot of ways. So you know we love to have these we love to have these seminars Tuesdays and Thursdays. We love to get the information out there. And we love even more when people share it with others so that this message can spread about improving mental wellness. Yeah, that that's you know we we are so grateful to have you know a an expertise in the biochemistry department to, to help walk us through how nutrition really plays a role in our stress and how it plays a role in our mood. Um, you know, so we went over the last five common questions that, you know, we always get, but at the very, you know, at the end of this, we want to make sure that we open up the floor so that each of you all have the opportunity to ask a question that you might have been thinking about or you might be wondering about. Um, so first, Sean, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and walk through the chat and you know we'll we'll address those chat questions first, and then we'll we'll unmute the uh, we'll allow everybody to unmute and and ask their questions if they have any. Sound good? Sounds good. All right. So the first question that we we got, and we get this almost every time we have a seminar. You know, where can I find these slides and a recording of this conference? Um, and you know, you can find these at seantalbot.com. Uh, Sean actually, you know, goes out of his way to, to upload these immediately or the next day of, of each night. So the slides are available there and also the uh, recording on YouTube is there. In addition, the, the recording is also available on Facebook in our Facebook groups in which you can share and hold watch parties and you can access them in that uh, fashion as well. Okay. Our next question, okay, for Sean. What would you say to someone who says that the strain lactobacillus rhamnosus is also in their probiotics and helps her with bloating? Yeah, and, and, and um, so th th that isn't really a strain, right? So when somebody says lactobacillus rhamnosus or lactobacillus acidophilus, all, all you're knowing is the genus and the species. You're not knowing what the strain is. And it's really that strain designation that tells you what, what, what the benefit is going to be, if there's going to be a benefit at all. It, it, you know, it'd be like saying to somebody, you know, hey, I got a dog, right? Well, what kind of dog? Did you get a poodle or did you get a Great Dane? You know, it, I, the, 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 the species and strain get, get, down to the, get down to the nitty gritty, right? That's what really matters. So to use that example, lactobacillus rhamnosus, we use a lactobacillus rhamnosus strain that is specifically shown to help with mental wellness issues, right? So, so stress, anxiety kind of things, right? Um, there's another lactobacillus rhamnosus strain that's really, really popular. You can find it in most every grocery store. It's lactobacillus rhamnosus GG, and that would help with bloating. That, that one is, 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 is pretty good. So the strain designation is GG. That one I recommend to people for 
traveler's diarrhea. I recommend it for bloating, but it's not going to give you any of those mental wellness benefits. We actually have a different lactobacillus rhamnosus strain in another one of our products at Amare called Probiotics that has five different strains. One of them is a lactorhamnosis strain that helps with overall gastrointestinal function. There's another lactobacillus rhamnosus strain called GR1 that helps with urinary tract infections, right? So you can see the strain matters, right? When, when, you know, when we're saying our 11 strain versus this GG strain versus this GR1 strain, those are all really, really different benefits, stress, uh, bloating, and urinary tract infections, right? So you really have to be on top of what the strain is. And, and we, we, are, we are like way out front. We are as transparent as possible about what strains we use and why so that we can deliver a particular outcome. Yeah, and I, and I think, you know, that's a fantastic, you know, response to that. And, and, you know, I just wanted to reiterate how important it is for that strain to be there because with targeted and personalized nutrition, you know, we really want to make sure that we know exactly what that organism does. Um, we don't want to be taking, you know, a strain that helps with traveler's diarrhea when we're looking for something that helps boost our serotonin. Um, so, you know, I think that's, you know, such an easy way for us to understand Dr. Sean, thank you. Right. All right, so our next question here is, is there a product or combination of products you would recommend for women of a certain age or who are experiencing menopausal symptoms? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm married to one of those women. Um, and so, <laughs> so, what we, uh, I, so I'm right there with you. I, I, I feel your pain, I feel her pain. Um, menopausal symptoms are tough. And so people automatically think that if you're, if you're having hot flashes, you're having night sweats, you're having mood swings, you know, that kind of stuff, that it's automatically related to estrogen. Uh, and it's not necessarily, uh, we know that a lot of things like, like, um, like hot flashes, for example, are actually more related to fluctuations in neurotransmitters than they are to fluctuations in, in reproductive hormones like, like, like estrogen. And so that's one of the reasons that, that people who take either our fundamentals pack uh, or our Mood Plus product, which is, a, which is an herbal anti-stress mood enhancing kind of a product, they will very often come back to us and say, hey, you know what? I don't, seem, I don't seem to be having as many hot flashes as I was before, or if I'm having them, they're lower intensity and that kind of stuff. And they go, is this doing anything to my estrogen? And it's not doing anything at all to your estrogen levels, um, except very, very um, uh, indirectly, circuitously. So what those products are doing directly is helping your body with neurotransmitter metabolism. So serotonins and dopamines and those kinds of stuff. So that can have an effect. Both of those products will also lower cortisol, which is the body's primary stress hormone. And if, that, if cortisol is high, it can sometimes interfere with normal reproductive hormone metabolism. So if cortisol is high, it can sometimes lead to problems with um, testosterones and estrogens and progesterones. So lowering cortisol can sometimes normalize these other hormones. There's also a metabolic effect there where a lot of people who are going through menopause will start gaining weight, especially around the midsection. It, ha it happens to men too when they go through andropause. Uh, and so those are related to thyroid and insulin and those sorts of, you know, uh, metabolic hormones, lowering cortisol will also help those hormones work better, you know, so your overall metabolism is better. So it's not like fundamentals or mood plus is working directly on those hormones, but by normalizing their, their respective metabolisms, they're, they're having a cascading effect where those other metabolisms rebalance on their own. So we see that kind of an effect all the time. We recommend that people give it a try and, uh, you know, see if they, see if they, see if they notice it for themselves. Awesome. So a, a question just popped in just to kind of uh, back up towards the strain specificity aspect of, um, you know, the probiotic strains that we use. Um, you know, how do you know that the strains that they use are specific to a certain health benefit? Yeah, this is, this is where it's really important for people to become um, educated consumers, right? So, you know, I would say probably 90% of the probiotic products on the market don't even tell you the strain. 
right? It, it, it's not something that companies either understand or think that their customers understand. And so you'll see products all the time that just, just list the, the genus and the species and they don't tell you the strain. And if you, like I said earlier, if you don't know the strain, you can have no idea what the, what the proposed benefit is supposed to be. So what I tell people is, if you don't see a strain designation, lactobacillus, acidophilus, something, don't even consider that product. You have to be able to see the strains. But then the question becomes, is that company going out of their way to explain why this strain, why that strain, why that strain? It's not a matter of just giving you more strains. More strains is better. That's, that's ludicrous because like I was saying before, some of those strains might be for, let, 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 me, let me use this very graphic example. One of those strains might be for constipation. One of those strains might be for diarrhea, right? Those are opposite effects. You probably don't want those two strains in that same product. In different products, sure. Um, so, so that's, you really have to ask those questions. What strains, why these strains, what are the benefits? And, you know, so, you know, we've, we've talked about this for minutes on the, on the call tonight. Mo most companies aren't, aren't even giving it any, any, any sunlight at all. And that's, and that's, that's something I think that you'll see change going into the future as consumers become more, um, more educated and more aware that they need to be looking for, for these strain designations and, and, and actual real science behind why those strains are in the products. Yep, and that's exactly right. And and to, to help you kind of identify that, just in case you, you still might be questioning what that might look like on a label, um, you should see a, for each probiotic a three set series in each of their names. So the first part, the second part, and then some sort of code or, or, or a series of letters that come with it. That's how you know the strain in case you're, you're still wondering. Right, um, right. So with that being said, you know, we've got, I think, one or two questions here. Um, are, do we have plans to have a Project B3 kind of group session, Dr. Sean? Oh. I think you're muted, Dr. Sean. No, I'm, I, your, your, your audio went out when I could see your mouth moving, but I couldn't hear the question. <laughs> okay, so do, do, we, do we plan to have a Project B3 group in the near future? We'll, you know, we'll have one. We were just about to announce one when the, this whole coronavirus stuff happened, right? We probably still could have done it because it was going to be online anyway. You know, it was going to be like a weekly, you know, Zoom call like, we, like we've done in the past. Um, we'll do another one, but we decided to just put, put, put the brakes on and, and, you know, see, you know, see, see what's going to happen over the next couple of months. You know, it, it, I mean, maybe this would have been the perfect time to do it because everybody's home. But now here we are. It's April 21st. I guarantee you, as soon as May hits, everyone's going to start thinking about summertime. Everyone's going to start thinking about getting their beach body on and, you know, getting into that bathing suit and things like that. So, um, yeah, we'll do, we'll, 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 we'll do one. And I think what we're going to try to do this time though, is, is, is do it less from a weight loss perspective and more from a fitness perspective. Um, so you'll see, you'll see that little nuance come in, uh, in just a little bit. That's awesome. Thanks, Dr. Sean. So I think now that we've covered pretty much all the questions in the chat box, why don't we go ahead and allow everybody to unmute themselves if they have a question and, and we can cover the, the, the rest of the questions in, in that aspect. Yeah, let's do it. Can, so, so can people just click and unmute themselves or do you have to do it? No, I, I've allowed just right now. So oh, anybody sweet. who has a question can unmute themselves and ask us. I have a question. Okay. Yeah, fire away. Oh, hi, Dr. Sean. Hi, uh, Michael. Um, I still don't understand how you know, how do you know which strain is specific to that particular condition? I still don't understand. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So that, yeah. For, so from, from clinical trials that are done, right? Okay. So tip, typically how the, how these go is that, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll identify a strain, You'll figure out what the metabolism of that strain might do. You know, so here's this strain. It looks like it, you know, in a, in a test tube, it does something with serotonin. Okay, maybe that's going to be good for mood. Let's give it to mice. 
and see if we can get depressed mice to, to be less depressed mice if we supplement their food with this particular probiotic. Okay, the mice, the mice get less depressed. Now let's go into a human trial where we look at depressed people and we give it to them and we see if it improves their mood. And then the next stage, which is really just starting to happen now, we have a lot of that data. We know what the metabolism of the bacteria looks like. We know how it performs in animal studies. We know how it performs in a, in a, in a diseased study, uh, um, uh, uh, diseased human population, like with depression or with autism or with anxiety disorders. The next phase, and this is where Amari is really on the cutting edge, is how can those same strains mm -hmm. be used in a healthy population? And that's where you'll see that the people that we study are, are kind of the people who would be kind of in that middle of that mental wellness continuum. They're stressed out. They're pretty good there. You know, we've got a bunch of patents filed. We've got a bunch of clinical trials done. We've got a bunch of uh, peer reviewed uh, scientific publications, you know, out there that people can consume. So um, yeah, it's a really exciting area. Okay. Uh, thank you. Dr. Mm -hmm. Sean. I have a quick question. Hello. Yeah. I actually got it. asked by Melanie to come in and ask you guys a question about your product. That's, I'm going to say this all wrong. So bear with me. Um, what is it? Metabiotics? Metabiotics. Yeah. Metabiotics. Okay. So the reason why she asked me to come in is because I have a lot of allergies okay. and she wanted me to kind of read on the product and what's in it. And so I did. And one of, I had two questions. One was how did you get the extracts extract mm -hmm. from um, the fruit I'm assuming. And I was wondering if it was in a tincture, that that's kind of how you did it where you put the fruit and liquor and let it sit there, all that stuff. Yeah. Um, go ahead. Okay. So, so um, the, 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 the way that we get the extract differs depending on what bioactives we're trying to get out of the extract. Okay. So a lot of times we'll like the traditional use of a lot of these kinds of herbals and fruit extracts are, um, are hot water extract. So, you know, traditionally thousands of years ago, they would make a tea out of it. They would yes. take the thing, they would boil it in water, they would, yep. they would drink the water, or they would, you know, they would, they would do it that way. Yep. Sometimes, though, there are different bioactives that won't be water soluble, and sure. so you want to extract them with alcohol. Yeah. You know, so sometimes we're using alcohol, sometimes we're using water, sometimes okay. we're using a combination of them. So some of those extracts go through a dual extraction process. Yep. We have a couple that we extract under um, carbon dioxide. Uh, and under pressure. So we get different bioactives out of that. So, you know, people ask me all the time, they're like, do you use natural ingredients? And I say, yes. And they say, do you use, do you use whole foods or do you use extracts or do you use concentrates? And I say, yes, we use all of that depending on what effect we're trying to get in that particular product that we're delivering. Does, it, does that make sense? Yes, it does. One thing we don't use though, and a lot of nutrients go through this, there are all kinds of, um, like pretty heavy duty solvents that can be used mm -hmm. um, yes. that are like, like, like petroleum based, you know, like paint thinner basically. Yeah. Which you isn't know? healthy. Which isn't healthy at all because yeah. even if you, even if you do the extraction and then you can sort of suck off or evaporate off that solvent, you can, so it's not there anymore. Yeah. You can still measure residual solvent residue in a lot of those extracts. And that's something that, we just, we just aren't prepared to do. Like we can look back at the traditional usage and say, yep, sometimes they used hot water. Yep. Sometimes they used alcohol. Like you just, you know, just described, yep. let's do that because we know that that has thousands of years of history and now we can apply good modern science to it and we can show how it works. We don't yep. need to go with some of that, that, that chemical solvent kind of stuff. Okay. And the last yeah. question, which is the most important one is the product had the Asian apple. Yeah. When I Googled the Asian apple, it kind of brought up a pear, which I'm assuming is not what you guys are talking about, but then it also brought up a red apple. The reason why that is the most concerning is because I'm highly allergic to apples. And so I needed to know what kind of apple it was based on the color. Yeah. So I was explaining to Melanie how I could eat raw yellow apples, but no problem. 
but I can't have it cooked, nor can I have it juiced. I okay. can have juiced red apples, but I can't eat it raw, nor can it be baked, like in okay. a pie. But I so, can have the green in the pie and not in the drink. Or the raw. So that was the concern. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so it was like, I would really need to know the specific of the color of the apple, not necessarily the kind of the apple, because the kind has never had a reaction. It's always the color of it. Yeah. So you could, Break that down. That'd be great. Interesting. So um, Melanie actually asked that question before, but like before we went on tonight. Yeah. And what I was explaining to her is that you know a, a lot of times like like um, food sensitivities or allergies like that to a particular food are due to a protein in that particular food, um, mm -hmm. and because of the extraction process that we go through, like that apple. There's no apple in that extract. It's just exactly. that polyphenol that's that's left over mm -hmm. from that extraction process. So it would be highly unlikely that you would have a problem, but you, you, you never know. Allergies are yeah. such a weird thing, yeah. you know, that, you know, the only way to know is to try it, but that's not a good recommendation either, because if you have an allergic reaction, that's no good, you know? Yeah. So there's, there's really no hard and fast rules on that kind of thing. Okay. All right. Okay. That is my crazy question. Thank All you. Right. <laughs> it's not so crazy. There's a lot of people in that situation. And what we find, and this is something that, this is something we suspected at the very beginning of the, of the company, but we didn't know it was going to happen for sure. And now we've seen it thousands of times where a lot of these food intolerances, whether you classify them as allergies or sensitivities or whatever, it's not so much that, that the person has a problem with the food. Yeah. It's that that food is a mismatch with the microbiome and the gut lining. And so if you can fix the microbiome and you can tighten up those tight junctions so you don't have leaky gut anymore, mm -hmm. a lot of times that food problem goes away and people will almost notice it by accident. They'll go and they'll, they'll accidentally have some of that food that used to give them a problem and they'll go, oh my gosh, I didn't get my stomach ache or my rash or my thing that I normally get. I don't get that anymore. And it's because now, their, their gut and their gut lining and their immune system and is, is more tolerant of whatever that food was. Does that make sense? I know, yes. I know for me, one of the things that I've learned, and it's not always the food, it's wow, it's how the farmers um, process the food, mm -hmm. you know, because everything has to last a certain amount of time in sure. the so-called grocery store. Yeah. It's got to go on a truck and it's got to go yes. on. A, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And learning my apple allergy, I've learned that the red apple is the one that they put wax on. And I could really be allergic more to that wax could than be. Yeah. the red apple. Mm -hmm. However, it's very hard to get that wax off of the red apple. It's not a wax. They don't put wax on the yellow apple, but they put it on the red and they put it on the green. And so yeah. it depends on how that food is processed, depends on how I have a reaction to it. Gotcha. So it might I, not be the apple at all. It might be yeah. that, it might be that processing aid of, or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So I get you. All right. Thank Interesting. You. Sure thing. All right. Any other questions? Feel free to unmute yourself and, you know, ask away. All right, we actually got one question on Facebook, Dr. Sean. Um, how is nutrition and stress related to autoimmune diseases? Yeah, so, so stress, is, stress is a weird thing when it comes to your immune system. So stress, depending on the person, I've written a lot about this and done research studies on this. So we know that some people, when they're stressed, their immune system typically become suppressed, right? So stress-induced immune suppression is like a very well-known physiological phenomenon. You're stressed out, you're sleep deprived, your immune system goes down. If your immune system goes down, you catch the next cold or the next virus that comes, you know, that you're exposed to. Some people though can respond to stress with an overactive immune system response, right? So they, they, they can, if, if your immune system is overactive, that can lead to more food intolerances. It can lead to allergies. It can lead to autoimmune system conditions where your immune system now starts to attack itself. Um, and so that modulation of the immune system is, you could look at it a couple of ways. You could say, well, let's control the stress out here. So your immune system isn't thrown out of whack one way or another. Or a lot of the products that we have in our line, in order to get the signaling from the gut to the brain and vice versa efficiently, 
we address the immune system. We do something with the immune system called immune system priming, which rebalances your immune system vigilance. So if it's suppressed, it comes up to normal. If it's overactive, it comes down to normal. So that idea of stress being related to the immune system and the immune system being related to the signaling between the gut brain axis, that's something that we've been doing since the very, very beginning with fundamentals, with kids' fundamentals, with our GBX foods, et cetera, et cetera, because that's how we help people feel their best. If your immune system is underactive or overactive, you're not gonna feel as good as you, as you could even if we're doing everything possible in your two brains. So, you know, that autoimmune relationship to stress is a very well-known relationship and we're addressing it in this very systemic approach. Awesome, thank you, Dr. Sean. You know, I think that uh, closes out our, our questions and answers segment. It's about 7.30. Um, you know, I wanted to thank Dr. Sean for his time. You know, his expertise in the area has been a pleasure every Tuesday and Thursday. And I wanna thank you all for, you know, joining us on each of these science nights because, you know, we, we need you to, to, to help us and, and carry on what we're doing here. And we value all of your guys's, you know, interest and participation. So, you know, we hope to, we hope to see you on Thursday and have a good night. Any other last words, Sean? No, I think that'll do it. That was a good closing statement. Have a good night, everybody. Good night.